awake. This time I know where I am. The familiar hum of the bathroom extractor fan brings me back to the world of the living. My shirt is soaked. No sweat? Blood? No. Water. The tap is running. Looks like I got thirsty. After participating in this latest sleep study, following years of adventuring in my sleep, I was told it could help to write my experiences down, anything I can remember as soon as I wake up. This has turned into, as soon as I work out what's going on. Initially, all I feel when I wake is a burst of a sharp, intangible fear. Writing this down is the first step towards getting my brain to accept that I am truly conscious and aware of my actions, apparently. I don't know how it started. This has just been always with me. My first memory of sleepwalking was when I was on a holiday with my parents when I was about four. I woke up in the hotel service lift, cuddled in my duvet with a blistered burn on my arm. I had absolutely no idea where I was. The first face I saw, that of my panic-stricken mother, she had, along with the police and anyone she could find, been searching for me all night, expecting the worst. I feel what I now think of as dread whenever I think about that day. Dread isn't a feeling you really know as a child. You live day to day, moment to moment, looking forward to things, but never really looking back. This isn't meant to be a diary. I suppose I'm just providing context. The clinicians said they didn't want to read this. It's just for me. So I'm so unconvinced that anything can work at this stage that I feel I just want my cynicism duly noted. When you live a life where your partner has to move rooms, then eventually move out with your son and disappear from your life because they cannot live with the sleeping you, Anything is worth a try. Awake. This time it took much longer to work out where I was. Sitting outside my childhood school, a ten minute walk from my house. Dread. Fear. Freezing. I've started sleeping fully clothed following an episode where I woke up half naked in the railway station. Little consolation when it's mid-December, that dream everyone has where they're stood in public having forgotten their clothes. Yep, I've lived it. I need to think of a new way to keep myself from unlocking the front door. The thought of walking about the streets at night completely unaware of my actions, even in this quiet town, is frankly terrifying. Maybe a combination lock? Would it really be possible for my unconscious mind to remember a combination? If I can find the key, despite hiding it from myself, maybe it's possible. Anyway, note to self, in hindsight, the cutlery drawer was a terrible place to hide the key. My hands are riddled with fine cuts like I've been raking through thorny undergrowth or losing a fight to a pit of tiny nails. Awake. On a sofa? It has been so long since I've woken up anywhere without feeling intense pain in some part of my body. Cramped up on a bench, maybe having stood for eight hours straight? Huddled in the shower under cold water, 
feeling and looking like I've wrestled bears. The fear eased so much more quickly today. I even remember part of a dream. The pills they gave me are supposed to make me from dreaming anymore. Are supposed are supposed to make me dream more, taking away from the deep sleep in which sleepwalking occurs. This dream wasn't pleasant. The floor was made of writhing, carnivorous masses, and I felt like I was being drawn down towards them. I could hear faint, childlike whispering, which stopped as soon as I be as soon as I became aware of it. Strangely, I felt calm. I knew it was just a dream, and that I meant and that meant I wasn't sleepwalking. When I went to get dressed today, I found my that my shoes were caked in mud. Maybe I did go out. Awake. It has been three days since I've fully since I've been fully conscious. At least sure enough that I am awake to write anything here. Something has changed. The dread won't leave. I think something terrible has happened. I've suffocated. I can't have done what I think I've done. I've stopped taking the pills. The dreams aren't helping. I can't stop liking this feeling back to the one in the hotel lift. The panic look that only a mother can have when they feel they have lost their child. And I felt like an onlooker. Felt like I didn't understand her pain, her fear. All I could feel was my own. That whispering, crying. I followed it last night, not for the first time, but it drew me further and further down a rugged pathway in the woods behind the house. The still darkness surrounded me so completely, every step I took echoed with the crash of brittle corpses of twigs and crisp leaves. A cabin? I knew this place. This is my place. I couldn't help but feel that if I looked inside, I would never be able to leave. Am I conscious? I know all this is real. I unlocked the what felt like the bolt after bolt, lock after lock. 1562, 1909, 2016. Click, click, click. So slowly, I shifted the heavy wooden door, shuffling rats. A dank miasma of disturbed air filled my lungs. The weathered hollow face Looking back at me is that same face, that same look, that four-year-old child in the lift, older now. Please, I want to go home. Dread. Incapacitating fear. This is where I kept it. I know now. They're not trying to stop my sleepwalking. They're trying to make me remember. Awake? To this day, I have no idea what I saw. People I tell seem to not believe me, but I swear this is true. A little background before I get into it. I am a a 29-year-old construction worker, being, been doing it since high school, metal framing and sheet rock mostly, 
I'm in decent shape. No history of mental disorders in my family. Only problem I have developed over the years is a mild case of tinnitus from being stubborn and refusing to wear ear protection. It comes during times of silence, like when I'm trying to sleep. So I try to keep the TV or a fan on to cancel out the ringing. Work was getting very slow where I lived, so I decided to move to Virginia. I was staying with a friend who got me this sweet gig with a local construction company on Norfolk Naval Base. Huge job. Five-story building, complete build-out from the ground up. Good pay. Not exactly close to where we were staying, but the drive wasn't... Uh, but the drive wasn't bad as long as I made it in before morning traffic. Only thing wrong with the job was the foreman was a complete asshole. Always talking down to us workers in that sort of passive aggressive tone that made me want to punch him in the face. But as long as we stayed busy, he didn't bother with us for long. It was a huge job and we had a lot of people to bug. About four months into the job, I injured my right hand, sliced my middle finger on a piece of metal. It didn't hurt at all. The doctor stitching me up said it was because I cut it so deep it severed the nerves. The next day I had a file and injury report and everything. My boss said he was going to put me on light duty and I didn't have to do anything except sweep until my hand healed. I was all for that. Same pay for easy work. For the first week things were alright, but then it started getting boring. I mean really boring. The days dragged on and I wondered why they didn't just pay me to stay home. So naturally, I started wandering the job to kill time. Checking out all the hallways and there were plenty of hallways. Really long and gloomy looking when they were just gray brick all around. Some at the very top didn't even have temporary lighting and would have been pitch black if it weren't for the huge window cutouts on each end letting in some sunlight. I stayed away from those hallways. They creeped me out. Okay, so one day I was feeling bored, so I decided to go walking around the fourth floor. Most of the work had been finished and there weren't any other trades doing work there at the time. So I had it all to myself. I was around that time I noticed my tinnitus was acting up worse than usual. I figured someone must have had a generator running or something so I started moving towards the other way, the other end of the hallway. About three quarters of the way my ears started painfully ringing. I tried sticking my fingers in my ears and humming which usually does the trick, but the ringing was so intense. I started feeling nauseous and I fell over on my hands and knees. I was slapping my ears trying to make the ringing stop. My eyes were watering at one point because I was slapping my head so hard. I got up on my knees, still covering my ears, trying to get my feet so I could make it to the stairwell. Stairwell. But the ringing was so intense, every move I made sent my head spinning. Moving slow helped, but not much. As I turned around, I noticed someone standing at the other end of the hallway, near one of the window cutouts. The sun behind him was so bright, all I could see was a silhouette. I started yelling, Help! Help! As loud as I could, But the guy didn't move. I thought maybe he had earplugs in and couldn't hear me, so I started moving towards him, slowly so I wouldn't so slowly so my head wouldn't spin. As I got closer, I started noticing things I hadn't before. First, this guy was huge. Like impossibly huge. His head was small in proportion to his body body, 
and near the top of the window. His shoulders were really wide and high, almost like he was shrugging. His arms were long, hanging down past his waist, with really long fingers on each hand. I couldn't make out any facial features because of the bright sun behind him. But as I started realizing, this person wasn't normal. I slowly backed away. He just stood there, looking right at me. I was almost to the stairs when this thing slowly cocks its head to my to the side, like a dog does when it's confused. And the ringing in my ears just goes crazy. It was extremely painful. At the time, I thought my ears were bleeding. I was pressing my hands into my ears and yelling, but it was so loud I couldn't even hear myself yell. I dropped back on my hands and knees and threw up on the floor until I was puking air. I looked up to see if the thing was coming after me, but I caught a last glimpse of it as it walked into a nearby room. The instant it disappeared around the corner, the ringing in my ears just stopped. Like someone hit the mute button. Needless to say, I ran the fuck out of there and didn't look back. I stayed away from the fourth floor for the next couple of months. I told a few people what I saw, but they only pretended to be interested. It was about five months after it happened when I decided to go back up there. I checked every room. If there were any signs of this thing, they were long gone. I went to the window where it was standing and took a measurement. The top of the window was 10 foot 9 inches. I still have tinnitus. There have been a few times when I'm laying in bed at night and the ringing gets painful and I freak out and check every room in my apartment but it never gets as bad as it was that day. I really hope it never does. This actually happened to me a few years back at the University of Arts in Pennsylvania. My sophomore year, I roomed with a girl named Kara. She was a jazz vocalist, but her main interest was opera. We had a small room on the sixth floor of a dormitory called Juniper Hall. The walls were thin, and her late night singing and voice practices would keep me up late. After a month or so of lost sleep, I convinced her to move her late night practices to the music studios in the Miriam Theater building a block away. Around 8 o'clock one evening, Kara announced that she would be practicing late for an upcoming recital and probably wouldn't be home until around midnight. Great, I thought. That means I can go to bed early. I was beat. I had a horrible day in acting studio and was ready to pass out as soon as I had dinner. She said good night and left. Coffee and sheet music in hand. I made some grilled cheese and soup, gobbled it down, and immediately began to prepare for bed. By the time I got out of the shower, my eyelids were so heavy I could hardly brush my teeth. I pulled on my PJs and crawled into the top bunk of our bunk bed. I was out as soon as my head hit the pillow. I should take a second to describe the layout of our apartment. When entering the apartment, the bedroom was through the door immediately to the left. Our bathroom was inside the bedroom and just past the bunk beds. University of Arts is nice in the sense that you don't have to share a bathroom. Anyway, I woke up to the sound of the apartment door closing. I opened my eyes and groggily checked my phone. Midnight on the dot. So I rolled back over and closed my eyes. I heard Kara enter the room 
and stop in front of the bunk bed. Checking to see if I'm actually asleep, I thought. She flopped down on the bed below me, which was strange, as she was a stickler for brushing her teeth and washing up before bed. Then again, exams were just around the corner and we were all exhausted. The mattress below me creaked and then was silent. I couldn't even hear her breathing. I started to drift off again. And I was just on the edge of a deep sleep when I was startled away again by a noise. A key in the lock. The door opening. And Kara entering our apartment, humming an opera tune. The mattress below me creaked.